Hello, welcome to Country Stitchers. I'm Liz. Deb's on a holiday this weekend, so I thought I'd take an opportunity I have here to show you how the gadget from our last video works. On Gadget Corner, you may remember if you saw video number 99 that I introduced the flexible bodkin from Clover. They've been around. It's not new to to the industry, but it is new to me. Um, so I'm gonna show you how easy that is to use. I also uh, hope you noted on the picture for the video that there were some Christmas stitching items there. This is the 31st of July that I'm recording this video. And it's the last day that I told myself I'm gonna stitch all Christmas. So since the 1st of July, I've been just working on my Christmas projects and today's the last day for that. It's not that I'm going to put them away because I'm going to continue to work on them, um, but they got a nice shot in the arm um, and boost for the holiday. Maybe I'll have a couple of them done and actually ready to put on display before the holiday comes this year. The third thing I want to share with you in this short video is that really wasn't intended to sound funny because it is a short video, um, but it is something that I do when I change ribbons or when I add a ribbon to a finished piece or I put something through a casing. Um, many of you probably already know about it. It's just a little tip to save you some time. So I'm going to share it with you. And if you haven't seen it before, you'll probably enjoy knowing about it. You may, um, Remember back in the days when you had your elastic needed replaced in your pants or your gym bag needed a new drawstring in it, whatever the case was that you had to put something through a casing and your mother said, you're old enough, you can do it. Um, and my mom handed me a safety pin and I had no idea why I had a safety pin. So she showed me, she took the time she showed me how to put the safety pin onto the end of what I was going to be replacing in the casing and then how to feed it through. And of course, I wanted the largest safety pin I could find that would fit in that spot because I hated doing it and I wanted it to go faster. But the idea behind that was that you put the casing, excuse me, you put the safety pin into the casing and then you loaded your fabric onto the safety pin and sort of an accordion fashion and then when you got enough on there then you slid it down your your cording and then you worked some more onto your safety pin and slid it down and I'm sure there were other things people used besides safety pins as a young person I discovered I could do it much faster with a, an inverted crochet hook and I would actually sew the end of this onto the bottom of the crochet hook and put it in that little groove um, on the needle itself and then I would just load that crochet hook with the casing and pull it through. Um, I can't tell you how many times I overdrew my cord and ended up having to put it through again um, or work it the other direction. But today, this little tool from Clover makes it much nicer. So that's, this is how we did it when we cooked on campfires and had rocks for tools. And this is the smaller of the two flexible bodkins. This is a very narrow channel here. You can go through probably close to a quarter of an inch casing with that. I like the rounded tip on this because when you're using it on fabric, linen, for instance, you can actually go through X number of threads like this and weave your ribbon or your thread through your, your linen this way. Um, and you can count the certain number of threads that you want uh, to go over and under. And that's very nice. Um, it makes it easy. When you load this flexible, they call it flex and glide bodkins. That's what they call it. I call it a flexible bodkin, flex and glide. So you load your ribbon through the eyelet at the bottom. It has some little gripper teeth inside, but I make sure I leave enough ribbon 
that I'm not going to easily slide it off the end of my bodkin. You could also put a little stitch here, just tack it together. Um, you want to make sure that you don't have it too full around the needle and, and cause yourself problems in the casing, but a couple of inches and it'll stay in place for you. Now I've taken a piece of gingham in advance of our visit here and I've just run a really rough running stitch across the top to make that casing. Um, that's actually the back and that's the front. And I can go in either end. I left them obviously open on both ends. So what we're going to do is take our flexible bodkin. Put it inside the casing. Now this is obviously going to be a quick demonstration of this because it's a small piece of fabric. But once you have it on, then you just kind of scrunch it toward the end of that needle. At this point, you want to hold your fabric. And what I do, or excuse me, your ribbon or cording, what I do is I take a hold of the seam under that flexible needle there and support it right at the end so that as I pull it over the needle, I don't pop any stitches off of this end of the casing. You just give it a couple jiggles and then a couple more and you'll get it past the end of your of your ribbon. And once you've got it past the end of your ribbon, you feed some more onto your needle. Advance the casing some more. And now you've come through the casing. You're almost out. That's the end of your needle. And with the next little tug, you'll be through with your ribbon. And there you are. That's how easy it is. Now the flexible part is very nice if you've already got a tube of fabric with a casing on it. So you can imagine what I just did, but now that needle will go around inside that casing when it's already in a tube and come right out the other side without there being any difficulty at all. Where something that's very straight, you find yourself once you hit the diameter of that tube, you find yourself trying to stretch and pull and stretch and pull and get it through the other side. So that is the flexible bodkin. What I wanted to share with you about replacing a cord or casing, this this is the new ribbon. I've done this end already. And you can see it's gathered. It goes in and out every four threads on the Lugana fabric. And this is the old ribbon at the bottom. Originally, it was a red satin cord. That wasn't my choice, uh, my favorite choice, because I, I thought it made it look like a Christmas needle roll. And it's actually the Illinois needle roll, and it has the tree, the bird, and sort of a little band sampler on top of it. So, and the flowers. So I didn't, I didn't want to make it look like it was a holiday. So I put in sort of a olive, what I thought was an olive green, but it really was a little more of a spring green. And Deb said she thought that made it look springy. So when I went to Hobby Lobby yesterday, I had the opportunity to look at their ribbon and I did find this blue ribbon, which I really like. And I was trying to match this thread that appears in the flowers as well as the band. And that thread is actually 792, which if you've ever seen 792, is just about identical to that ribbon. So I was fortunate, so it really matched up well. Here's the concept. If you've already got your your ribbon here, instead of removing it and taking it out of the casing and putting the new one in, if you fold or whatever you need to do to attach your new ribbon 
to the old cording or ribbon. I fold it in half and then I just sort of set it over the ribbon that's there. And you want to cover the ribbon or cording. I use about an inch. So I'm going to use a, a wonder clip here quickly just to show you what I'm talking about. Fold it over the end of your ribbon. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew those two pieces together right here in that inch that they overlap. So I've got a thread and needle already put together. So I will put those two things together. And all I do is I put a knot in it. I do a running stitch up the overlapped portion of the ribbon so that it anchors the two of them together. And I'll show you that right now. So you can see there I've just done a running stitch right there, a couple of stitches up the ribbon. Now at this end where the two overlap, I'm going to take and do a cross stitch here. By cross stitch, I mean I'm going to stitch vertically instead of horizontally so that I hold that flat against the ribbon. And what that, I didn't do that the first time I tried this. And of course it folded back on itself as I pulled it through the casing and it made it a little bit bulky. So it occurred to me that if I put a little vertical stitch there and hold those two pieces together, that that's going to mean it won't bunch quite as much as it had been. Excuse me one second. I Pull the thread out of my needle. Ow. Now I threaded my needle and pierced my finger. That was not my intention. <laughs> okay, now I'll finish that little cross vertical stitch there. One more pass around so it's not going to come out. And then I knot it. And we're ready to replace the, the ribbon. I know I did this to something I was working on maybe 10, 15 years ago. It was a, something I was fixing or replacing. It was probably the cording in the sweatpants or the MC hammer elastic or something that my son was wearing and came out or he lost a hoodie uh, cord in the dryer or washer. Anyway, at one point I, I figured out I didn't have to take something that was at, in out completely and then replace it. So I use another tool at this point, um, my purple thing, which is also a tool for filling a casing, but it's, it's wide at the end. It's a quarter inch across and the ribbon that goes in has to be fairly small because it gets rather bulky, but this is not flexible. So you can imagine if you had something the size of what I just showed you and you were trying to get this through there and it was already seemed like a tube, you'd be challenged to do that. So here we go. All right, so they're attached. This is, I'm just going to call this my open end of the ribbon. Now I put my fingers inside just to hold the casing out and I start drawing it up. And when I get to, to the point where it goes against the fabric, I use my purple thing. I keep a hold of my open ribbon so I don't pull it back through. And because this goes in and out of the Lugana, it's snug. So you have to work with it a little bit. I use the purple thing and I advance that through that first set with my purple thing. 
then I can draw it in with my open ribbon to the next one. It's still a little tight, so I'm going to keep a hold of my open ribbon and I'm going to go in another couple of passes, go under the ribbon. I'm slipping into the fabric one second here. Let me get under it and then I'll show you. Get under that ribbon again and then just work it in so it comes through the next two. Then I'm going to pull a little bit of that blue through into that space so it's not quite so tight. Again, I'm going to advance it with the purple thing. And I'm going to work my way around. If this was not being passed in and out of the Lugana, I could have probably pulled this through all in one felt swoop. Now I just did something kind of crazy there. I pulled my open thread through when I wasn't looking. So now what we'll do is we're going to get that flexible bodkin and we're going to thread this through and then we're going to weave it in and out of those openings. Now I've put a a little knot in here we'll see just a, a half tie on here to hold it in in one second I'll show you how this is working but I'm gonna do it down here in front of myself so I can see it this is just if I was gonna make this mistake it's great that I did it now while you're watching this video because now you're gonna see how both of these things work together and very slick so i've gone through three more sets of threads and now i'm going to take this and just pull that right through bring the blue one on through and then i'll go through the last couple and again all i'm doing is using that rounded dome end that looks relatively like the top of a blunt needle and I've now gone through the last three sets of threads. I'm gonna take that through there. I'll take this needle off now so I can show you how easily it pulls through. Okay, so we've got The last part of this to pull through there and now we've got the ribbon in both places and I can advance it from both directions and then I'll just take what I do here I just snip this off I don't even bother to take the threads out And now, I'm going to advance my purple ribbon a little using that, excuse me, I'm going to advance the blue ribbon using that purple thing because the situation is such that, um, that the ribbon's a little wider than the opening, so it's just a little snug. So I'm going to do that, then pull the other side, and now they're even, and I'm ready to tie that off. That was even easier than I could have hoped for, having pulled that all the way through on accident. And now I'll tie that shut. And now we have the blue ribbon at the top and at the bottom. So that's flexible bodkin. And my tip for how to take advantage of something you already have in a casing uh, without having to completely start over from scratch and reload it if you're replacing it. And before I get off and say goodbye. I want to show you quickly. I had some things on display um, 
on the thumbnail, the Christmas ones, I wanted to tell you what I had been working on. This is the piece by Kathy Barrick. It's the reindeer feed sack. And I've changed it a little bit. I wanted to add some depth to the trees in the pattern. There's a reindeer here, it's red, and it's flying over white trees. And then the border is red and white. I wanted my trees to have snow on the top and greenery still showing through on the bottom. And then I only did it with one strand instead of two because I want the deer to look closer. So I'm gonna see how that looks. Um, and I'll let you know if I make any adjustments to it. But I'm, I really like the way this is looking. It's a little hard to see um, in this lighting, but that one's been fun and I'll continue on that. This is the Stitch Along with Fat Quarter Shop. And I can tell you, because they've all come out now and I've seen them, this is week one, the banner. Week two is the stocking. And I started late on mine. Uh, week three is the house that sits here. Then week four are some presents. And then week five, which is this week, is an evergreen tree, Christmas tree, right here on the side. So my pillow is going to be about, about that big when I'm done. So it'd be a good size. And then when I was at Hobby Lobby, I found some trim I really like with this. So when I get to that point, I'll show you this again and you'll get to see how I finish it. I am, oh, that's the Kathy Barrick reindeer feed sack. And you can see at the top there where the white trees are, mine are gonna be white and green. That's what I changed. So this is by Linda Stoltz, Erica Michaels Designs. It is a silk gauze strawberry. It's called Ebenezer's, Ebenezer's Blessings, I think it is. I want to always want to say Christmas Blessings, and I know that's not right. Let me just see if I can make it a little bit easier there. There we go. That's the part I have done. I really enjoy working on this. It's a lot of fun. And then I'm working on a Biscornu by Just Nan. And if you want to know what I'm doing here, I'm changing the threads from DMC to Overdyed. So if you want to see those changes there in the previous video, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But I will show you the picture of right there is the top with the trees and the flower in between and then this is what it looks like with the overdides so far with the tree and the flower in between it's coming along it's a lot of fun and I thought I had one more I think that was it for now. Um, yes. So check back on our next video and you'll see where I got to today yet because I haven't had any time to sit down and stitch. But when I do, I plan to be working on that. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the tip on replacing a casing cord or ribbon that's already there and also how to use the flexible bodkin. As always, share the joy needlework. Bye-bye.